Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Pena X series Bravo. This is a knife that uh, at the time of this video is not currently available, but I, I very much hope that uh, they will bring this back. This is a really, really good pocket knife. It has a really, you know, kind of generic knife profile. Uh, there's nothing super spectacular going on with the locking system. It's a liner lock. Um, in fact, there's really nothing special going on with the entire aesthetic or functionality of this knife. Uh, what's special about it is that pretty much everything is done exactly right. <laughs> it is a spectacular knife. Um, and uh, it's really just super understated. Uh, we're gonna talk about that today. I'm, I am pretty excited about this. Uh, thanks so much to the uh, viewer who loaned this knife to me for review. He wishes to remain anonymous, I'm gonna honor that. This will go back to the viewer as soon as I'm done with it. I will link Pena Knives in general right down in the description. They are made by Riot, and generally speaking, they are pretty much all exceptional. I don't think I've ever handled anything from the Pena X series that I don't like. Most of the line is highly recommendable, so I'll make sure that there are links down below to show you guys what is available currently. Uh, it does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get through specs fairly quickly here so we can talk about this knife. Overall length of the Bravo is coming in at about seven and a half inches on the dot, Sli maybe slightly more, 7.6. The blade length is exactly three and a quarter, and the cutting edge, I believe, is three inches on the dot. Let's go ahead and do just a few size comparisons here up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. This knife has a bit more presence than the Rat 2, but it's not quite as big as the Rat 1, making this kind of a Goldilocks scenario. Uh, if you're like me and you kind of, you know, maybe you enjoy larger knives just because they're larger, but as far as day-to-day -day carry goes, you know, I've found that this is about the size that I prefer to carry for simple day-to-day -day tasks. Your mileage may vary. Let's go ahead and put it up against a couple of others. How about the Demco AD 20.5? And this is exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, I love the AD 20.5. The uh, Penny X Series Bravo um, it, versus the Titanium variant is slightly easier to carry. Uh, you know, the lighter weight versions of these knives might put up a better fight, but this guy's got a little bit less just presence overall. Take up a little bit less room while it's folded, but it's about the same overall length with definitely more cutting edge and roughly the same amount of handle room or, you know, handle positions, like hand positions while you're cutting. Uh, up against the Spyderco Para 3, another one of my favorites to carry. Again, we're in the same territory. There's just more presence with the overall profile of the Para 3. Last but not least, the Benchmade Bugout. This guy is going to be almost exactly the same length overall as the Bugout, almost exactly the same amount of cutting edge. It's just going to be a little bit more robust, a little bit thicker. How is the action on this knife? Well, it's a Riot. This one's been well broken in. Uh, the action manipulation is just perfect. The thumb stud placement is perfect. The detent is perfect, right? Uh, disengaging the lock bar is a breeze because of these scallops right here. Uh, where it falls down on your thumb is right there on the enlarged sharpening choil. Uh, whether you're doing the reverse flick or the regular, you know, the forward flick of the thumb, the shape of the thumb studs, the position of the thumb studs. Oh, and yeah, by the way, it's also a front flipper. I, I didn't realize how much I would appreciate this. This is a, this little teeny tiny ramp. I remember looking at this and thinking, can I front flip this? It's got a little nub right here. Is that enough to get a good, yeah, turns out that's all you need. Sometimes these front flippers, you know, and it depends on the design of the knife and the detent, right? But some of these front flippers, they have way too pronounced of a unicorn horn, right? This guy, it's almost nothing, right? People who don't like front flippers can basically just ignore that that's there because uh, it doesn't hinder the knife in any way, and just use the thumb studs, which work perfectly. But there's a really satisfying amount of fidget factor with this knife, knowing that it has exactly what it needs for you to deploy it the way that you want it to deploy, and nothing extra. There is no... There's kind of extra here, right? In the sense of like what knife enthusiasts enjoy because it definitely has an extra price tag. Um, but that's mainly due to the manufacturing process and the materials used, right? 
Um, but uh, outside of that, there's nothing really extra going on here. It's it's exactly what it it has exactly what it needs, and not a lot more. Um, so I really appreciate that, and I cannot stress enough exactly how satisfying this is. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, I think the pivot's actually a T8, so that's what we're going to be using today. Yeah, yep, T8. Uh, and then we have, for the scale screw, we have another T8, and we have two T8s for the pocket clip screws. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Does that need to be tightened? Nope, okay. Uh, there's a couple of screws underneath here that are likely also T8. I'm not going to take those scales off, even if they are T6. I don't think it's that big of a deal. The hardware is not normally what I'd call minimal because there's likely two more screws underneath there, but mm, it's not really, even if it is, like I said, even if it is T6, it's not a deal breaker. As long as you have quality tools, you should be good to go. The reason that I say that is because I really like the fact that this is a uh, titanium liner lock with the micarta overlays. Um, and in order to do that and keep the micarta down so that it's not trying to lift at the front, you kind of need a screw in the middle and then two screws underneath. At least that's how it's traditionally done. In some cases, it's done where the backspacer wraps around here so you can still get a screw in the middle and hold on to the backspacer and then another screw up here. And so it, both screws go through both. But sometimes when the backspacer wraps up around here, it means you have to shorten up the blade length and then your blade to handle ratio gets all wonky. So, you know, the way that they did this, I think is fine. Uh, sometimes, you know, my my parameters, I make exceptions, especially when I really like something, right? Don't we all do that? So that's what I'm doing here today. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain too much, even if there are additional T6 screws underneath there. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it. I'll get out my scale here. We are looking at M390 for the blade, micarta, a little bit of copper, and titanium. And then titanium for the liners, right? It's a titanium for the backspacer. Uh, there are a couple of different versions of this. There's this color, which I, this colorway is like, oh, I love this. I love how this looks. And then there's like a lighter brown micarta. I'm not sure if the accents are different. Uh, this weighs 3.88 ounces. So the ratios are not perfect. The balance is... It's right behind the pivot though. I mean, that's legitimately right where it is. That's where you're gonna hold it. So it doesn't feel like it quite weighs that much. And while the ratios, like when I say ratios, I mean like if you're going by the whole an ounce per inch of blade length, right? So if it had three, if it was 3.25 ounces, it would be perfect on ratios. Um, this slight increase in weight is not something that uh, would keep me from carrying it. I mean, it's a st it's still a sub four ounce object. And considering how compact it is when it's folded, um, yeah, I just, I don't really have a problem with that. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Uh, that looks to be something like 125 thousandths to me, but I'm often wrong just by looking at it. So let's measure. Eh, 133, I'm guessing it's probably 135. So that's about medium for the knife world, right? But of course the geometry of the blade and the height and all that will affect it. Okay, meat and potatoes time. This is a good looking knife in the sense that a simple knife is a good looking knife, uh, generically speaking, right? Some people prefer crazy stuff. Some people prefer the Spyderco Matriarch for some reason. I don't know if you wanna carry a folding plague doctor with busted teeth in your pocket, then you know, then maybe that's, if, if you find that attractive, then um, you might like the Spyderco Matriarch. Uh, I tend to gravitate towards knives that um, have a simple, initial aesthetic and then some of the details are in the design itself some of the if there are complexities it's in the design itself i really appreciate that right sometimes i like wild and crazy things right if the whole idea if the whole you know theme is wild and crazy if it's done well then i can appreciate that this is simple done very very well um these scales are contoured this is not an overly thick or overly thin knife it's just kind of knife it fills the hand really well and while there there is kind of an abrupt angle right here it's not something that i really notice uh, the entire handle profile is so open i mean there's no flipper tab on it right so you really feel like you can make full use of this area in here you can move around a little bit without feeling completely confined this pocket clip is 
another example of a really, really good clip. It does not carry deep, but it also doesn't carry shallow by my definition. It's kind of just in between, which is perfectly acceptable to me. Uh, it's also got a nice ramp underneath here, right? So there's not some weird, they're not doing the weird crazy. I don't know why some companies make these big crazy bills off that, you know, there's nothing at the end of the clip to snag on anything. And the top of it is contoured and it's wide enough and knocked down enough that it's just not a problem for your hand. It's able to do its job and look good uh, and not get in the way of your hand while you're using it. I really, really like that. The ergonomics of this thing are, you know, it's not like a, ooh, a hand melting lock-in, but it has exactly what you need to hang on to it and feel comfortable while you're using it in a wide variety of different hand positions, right? I mean, however you're gonna hold this thing, it's just kind of ready to go. And it's not because, you know, the designer came up with a brand new way to make a knife handle. They just went with something generic and traditional. Uh, this is a pretty common knife handle. You see it in a lot of different designs, right? I mean, it's not too far off from, if you look at the lines here, it's really not necessarily too far off from what the bug out does. Uh, it's, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of examples out there that kind of use this same thing and it, it just works, right? This area right here is not necessarily a choil that you can kind of get, but this area right here is flat enough and there's not like, you know, when it, when it comes to the drop, it's not so dramatic that you feel like you can't get up there. So yeah, the choke up position on this is pretty good. You can get right behind the edge without feeling like you're about to slice off your index finger. Uh, so I really like that. This particular setup with the micarta and the copper pivot collar, the uh, bronzed titanium liners, the copper uh, backspacer, the bronze thumb studs, it just looks so good. I, I'm a big fan of kind of a darker, like a, a black or a forest green in contrast with copper or bronze. The only thing that I wish is that they had either gone all copper and they can't really do that with the thumb studs unless they like coat them uh, or all bronze. Meaning the only part that looks a little bit weird to me is the copper and the bronze side by side. I wish they had done the bronze titanium pivot collar and a bronze um, backspacer. I think that would have looked just exceptional. And then the only other aesthetic thing that I would have changed, and you know, you guys know it's coming, instead of a satin finished blade, I would have preferred a tumbled finish. Uh, I think it would have looked a little bit better, but it doesn't necessarily hurt anything that it is satin. That's more of a preference thing. The thumb studs are maybe ever so slightly in the cutting path, but not really. I mean, here's where you're, you know, if you're gonna cut straight down and you can get right up next to it. Uh, this is, um, this is extremely preferable for me, like the blade shape for day-to-day -day stuff. It's the reason that I chose, this has been my day to, my daily carry for a long time. It's the reason I chose the shark's foot instead of the clip point, because I find myself doing more of this or this, right? I'm, it's, I don't do a lot of puncture tasks. I do a lot of like drag cuts or draw cuts or getting into packages, right? And even when I am doing things that are not like that, uh, I find that I'm I'm using the edge substantially more than I am using the tip. And even when I do need the tip, this is enough for me, right? Uh, so it depends on what you need, but day to day for me, this sort of sheep's foot, sheep's cliff, modified worn cliff, sheep's tanto, freaking reverse dragon, I don't, whatever you want to call it. Um, this, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this easygoing uh, smooth rectangle blade um, is one that I very much prefer for day-to-day -day tasks. We have a flat that runs about 85% the length of the blade. We have a nice swedge up here. This looks really nice. Uh, this part right here, uh, it kind of looks like a hand rub satin finish. It might be, it might just be machine going horizontal, right? And then we have a machine satin finish here on the bevel down to the cutting bevel. Uh, these areas up here are a little bit sharp, but not, not, I mean, just, just sharp enough to shave your fingernail. Not that big of a deal. Not enough to really bother your hand. Uh, this is M390 and I think this blade shape actually accentuates M390 pretty well. Uh, you know, if you're wanting just general, just, just sort of ease of maintenance, corrosion resistance, uh, and just good edge retention for general kind of light to medium duty tasks, 
Uh, this blade shape and geometry, I think, are really, really good for M390. Um, it's thin, but it's not like an absolute laser beam. Uh, you can see here we're slicing pretty efficiently without there being any lips or rolls on the edge of the paper. Paper cut test is really only good for showing you how the blade does on paper. Obviously, if you cut different materials, it's going to react differently, but the blade geometry is good. It's kind of a medium on the thinner side, but still kind of a medium geometry at the edge. And it just, it does what you need it to do. I appreciate that. Um, I, I don't know that I really have any complaints. At the front, it says Pena X series. And on the back, it says M390, which is just beautiful. That's, it doesn't need, we don't need any more than that, right? Um, I, the only thing that I would like better is if it didn't say anything on it. But it's okay that it says Pena X series. We have some jimping here. And it's weird to me that it only extends to here. I think it could have extended a little bit further, but... I don't know. I mean, that's it would be pretty nitpicky to complain about that. I I do though. I, I do wish that it was a little bit a little bit further down, right? I mean, this is still a knife that can handle some. When I say hard use, I mean essentially just continuous cutting for long periods of time against dense materials. I don't mean hammering it through a log, you know, or using it as a grappling hook. That's not how I define hard use. Um, but this is a knife that, you know, periodically I might actually want to get my thumb up there and really brace and do. That's I guess the example I'm using there is kind of fine detail work and not necessarily for hard use, but it's a knife that I consider to be fairly versatile. So I would like just to, you know, add to that. I, I would like, you know, the jimping up here so that I can add to the ergonomic versatility or so that I can have another option for a position. You can still rest your thumb up here and it's fine. You just don't have, beyond this point, you don't gain much traction. Um, there is no lanyard hole. And as you all know, I don't really consider that to be a flaw. If you love lanyards, you might consider that to be a flaw, but that's how I see it. The uh, backspacer is gear pattern. I think that's just fine. Uh, like I, you know, kind of talked about earlier, I think the pocket clip is essentially perfect. I don't really have any issues with that whatsoever. Um, the stop pin is located right here. There's no shouldering, but it doesn't necessarily need it. I think it's pretty obvious this runs on bearings, but I'll go ahead and say it. It runs on bearings. The lockout is completely and totally solid. You can see right here, there's your lockout percentage, which looks early, but it's still coming in uh, with about 20% of engagement as is indicated by these marks back. In fact, it's actually more than that. Sometimes this right here, you know, people go, oh boy, that's early lockup. And they say, that looks dangerous. The actual engagement is indicated right here. You can see how much of the tang, it's actually more like 40% of the tang is being engaged by the liner lock, which is plenty. The only people who are gonna say it's not good enough are people who plan on doing things like this with their knife or prying or doing things that knives shouldn't do. The actual geometry of the lockup is perfect for what you would normally use a knife for, and it doesn't need to be better than that. We don't need every knife to be a triad lock, right? Um, I love that this is a titanium liner lock with a steel lock bar insert. Why do I like liner lock so much? Because an exposed frame lock means that when you're squeezing really hard while you're cutting continuously over and over and over again, right, you might actually squeeze that lock bar further into the tang of the blade, which can, you know, sort of lessen the life of the lock or the lock bar insert because you're kind of mashing it in there, right? If once it gets all the way over, then you're going to develop lock rock. And that's a lot of the reason for the steel lock bar insert. So they can be popped out and sort of renew the life of it. Um, I uh, uh, just really like that we don't have to worry about that. You can squeeze as hard as you want. And then also while you're deploying it, whether you're doing the reverse flick, you're doing the standard forward flick, or you're doing the, uh, especially the, um, you know, if you're doing the front flip, you don't really have to worry about where your fingers are. You don't have to worry about whether or not you are creating uh, unnecessary pressure on that lock bar and making it hard to deploy. It's just going to deploy. Um, and it just does that super, super well. Uh, I really like titanium liner locks. I think they're awesome. Um, there's not much to complain about here. Uh, you know, it, it, the, uh, I, I, like personally, I, I would have rather had the bronze on the pivot collar and the backspacer, and I would have rather had um, a, uh, a tumbled finish. I also think it might have been a good idea to slightly elongate this sharpening choice. I mean, it's hard for me to call it a finger choice, kind of. I think slightly elongate it to clear uh, the the thumb stud and at the same time create enough room to actually get your finger in there. But this position here is still plenty comfortable and what I would consider safe. 
Um, this is an excellent, it's almost like it's accidentally, like it's almost a perfect, I mean for me, right? I, I try to be as um, objective as I possibly can in these knife reviews, but like my own preferences come out in them, right? Um, for me, this is almost a perfect daily carry. Uh, this is made by Riyadh. Uh, we've got M390, a substantial amount of titanium, and more importantly, execution of said materials is top notch. So the price tag of, you know, the, the most recent listing, which I think was a bit ago, was $275. And I got to be honest with you, I don't really find that very offensive. I think I would have been absolutely blown away at like 230 uh, 250 I think would have been kind of medium. And then 275 feels kind of, it's, it's getting up there, but it's not offensive, right? And that's kind of how I feel about everything right now with inflation and just the knife world in general, everything is just going up. But I'm really not all that offended by it. I love Riot knives. I own many of them. As somebody who really truly enjoys American-made knives, I love Riot knives even though they're made in China because they have some of the highest production quality out there, right? You have somebody like Pena designing these things and you get like a straightforward ultra utilitarian profile and blade shape. This, uh, this knife did something weird to me. I mean, you know, here's the end of this video. You don't need to hear this extra dialogue if you don't want to. I mean, if you're, if you're here, congratulations. You watched a YouTube video for, you know, 22 minutes. Um, the end of this video is, this is a recommendable knife. It's not available right now. I sure hope that they make more because this is freaking excellent. This is the first time that I've thought, you know, the only problem with this knife is that because of the price tag, it's really only desirable by people who are familiar with spending money in this territory, which is a large portion of my audience, right? If you're watching this right now and you're thinking 275 bucks for a pocket knife, oh my gosh, just know that I would say at least half of my audience, if not more, are, that's just like par for the course, right? Knives get way more expensive than that. And there are an enormous amount of people who will not flinch at a price tag like that at all. The only flaw with this is that this design is sort of gated off uh, to, you know, people who are just getting into the knife world. If this knife was made with, let's say, G10 and steel for the liners, uh, and then the blade was something like 14C28N, and it came in at, I don't know, 70 bucks, this would be like, holy crap, this is the greatest budget knife in existence and pretty much everybody should own this. I mean, this would be kind of where I, you know, kind of how I feel about the QSP Penguin. I mean, it would it would just feel like a more premium and more refined, but still accessible QSP Penguin. It's the first time I've ever thought, you know, Bestec makes premium knives and they make budget knives. QSP makes premium knives and they make budget knives. We, <laughs> they have two budget brands for some reason. Same with Kubi and a number of other brands. Riot seems to exclusively make premium knives and work with premium materials. I really wish that Riot, you know, and these other designers would opt for, and it, a lot of times it comes down to budget and just what they can order. Um, I kind of wish that this did have a, a, a less expensive alternative to itself, right? Um, you know, like how uh, Concept generally does like, it's the exact same knife. They have the less expensive version and then they have the super premium version, right? Um, I love this knife the way that it is. It's amazing. And people who are looking for, you know, I mean, if you're looking for like a one and done premium knife, I mean, here you go. This isn't, this is excellent. But I also wish it was more accessible to people who are on a budget and just want to experience, you know, this level of just like straightforward, good EDC awesomeness. <laughs> I love this. And I, you know, if I owned this, um, I would have a hard time not putting it in my pocket every single day. Um, and uh, it's just fun. It's cool. It has the materials you want and, you know, for the money that you're spending and it has the profile uh, that you want and it's just got the good manipulation, good blade shape for use and carry. It's just awesome. But um, that's, that's its only flaw is that we don't, is that Riot is so exclusively premium they they don't they don't do budget knives. I know that this is Pena and it's made by Riyadh, but it makes me wonder like 
why not? You know, it would be cool. Um, I, I think that that would be, you know, a huge dice roll for Pena to go, hey, let's make a budget series, right? And with Riot's level of execution, is that even possible? The amount of work that Riot puts into their stuff to put their name on it, do they even want to do that, right? Can they even get it to that price point? And that's, I'm not really sure. It just makes me wonder, right? Uh, in any case, this is excellent. Um, I'm going to put this in my recommended knives playlist. And again, I know you're thinking, why do you do this? Why do you, you know, why do you show us knives we can't get? Because knives come back, guys. You might be, you might not be watching this the moment that I upload it. You might be watching it a year in the future, in which case these have actually come back. Uh, and in that case, the links down below will actually lead you to them because they're search links, right? Um, so if you have an opportunity to pick this up for 275 or less, it's extremely recommendable. Not only am I going to put it in my recommended knives playlist, I'm also going to put it in my favorite knives of all time uh, playlist. I, I really did not expect to be so thoroughly blown away by this thing because it's such a simple knife, but it's really good. <laughs> I just don't have... I just really don't have any major criticisms at all. For some people, it might be a bit too big. For some people, it will be illegal for them to carry this, right? Uh, some people might say, you know, depending, like if you're used to carrying the mini bug out, uh, then maybe this will be a bit too bulky. But for the, I, I think that this is just like a generically, like it's just a good compact everyman knife. Um, so if you are looking to jump into the premium territory and you, mo you don't mind doing a little hunting if this is not available... Um, this is a great example of a truly one and done knife. Like if you don't want to enter the knife scene and go through the whole collection route, you just want one good knife, this might do it for you. Um, uh, that's my take anyway. Thanks so much to the anonymous viewer who uh, sent this in because I would otherwise not know that this existed. Uh, that's going to be pretty much it today. Like I said, make sure to check out the links in the description so that you can see if this is available and check out the other stuff from the uh, the Pena line. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.